how to process your sounds like space laces. Now, there's no real way of saying how he does it, but this is what I think he is using in order to get the unique sounds that he is creating in all of his songs. I think it's a secret tool that's been mm, probably not overlooked, but it's been underused by many people because it's kind of confusing. It sounds like shit when you first use it, but I think I've got a good grasp on how to use this tool. I've been using it for a while, and I think it's something that you would all like to know about. Now, before we actually get into it, I'm no damage, and I think it's important when you're getting knowledge off the internet, you understand a little bit about the person who you're getting your knowledge from. So I'm going to play a couple of tracks for you so you can kind of see where my production lies and get a better understanding of who you're learning from. Panda. Wow, that song was pretty fun. But if it wasn't squirtacious enough for you, let's play another one, just to be sure. The Dawn of the Mummy Maybe you're not a dirty club rat, and hard style is not the song for you. So let's check out one more before we begin. Money won't let kids know that illegal drugs are bad news. Wow, that was fun, and there's more where that came from, but I think it's time we get down to it. Now the plugin that I'm talking about is absolute trash. Mm, trash, I love trash, yum yum trash. It's called Trash 2. Now if you're watching this video and you're like, I know all about Trash 2, hold on a second, because you probably don't know that much about it, and I'm gonna show you why. Now I know what you're probably thinking, you probably have tried this plugin before, you've put it on a few sounds, it sounded pretty cool, you sifted through the presets, and it sounded like absolute trash. Maybe you played with the dry wet and it wasn't quite good enough, but maybe that's because you didn't know how to use it properly, and I know for a fact that if you do know how to use it properly, you will get rid of half of the plugins that you're probably using for processing. This thing's like saturator meets OTT meets just multi multi-band compression in general, the thing's fucking amazing, all right? And I assure you that top-level dudes are using this plugin to get their sound sounding amazing. Have you ever put on a bunch of plugins on a sound to try to get the sound that you're looking for and it's kind of there but still not quite there? I think this is a one plugin solution to your problem. Let's jump right in straight away and take a look at a couple of examples I've set up. All right, we're here in Ableton. Let's get started. So I have a couple examples here. The first one being a pluck sound, a random pluck sound that I found in Serum. Um, I have an OTT, Trash, an EQ. This is a reverb spaced out. We'll get into this stuff. It's not really that important, just the uh, Trash. Um, this is the preset that I found. <clears throat> I don't even know where I found it. It's just fucking random. I made a quick little MIDI clip for you. Let's just hear that back. All right, you get it. So I'm going to just throw on OTT before I throw in the trash. Regular OTT for you guys so that you can hear the just straight out of the box OTT with this sound before we get into the trash. I'll leave this here. And that's cool. That sounds good. So you're probably thinking, wow, it compressed it nice, did some cool stuff. I love it. Now let's hear it with trash on. Okay, so before we really jump into trash, I want you to notice a couple things. Obviously, this sounds like we put four or five OTTs on it. It sounds great. I'm not trying to knock OTT, but I just wanted to put that on in case if I get, you know, negative shit-stained comments about, oh, OTT, bro, because that's what I anticipated happening. Anyways, let's move on. All right, so now that we got trash in here, Let's talk about the main features that make Trash really fucking cool. Um, obviously, Trash makes it sound cool because it's multi-band. And the thing is, that's the, that's the secret, in my opinion, to this plugin is you can put all kinds of transformers into the multi-band um, and then shape it. So 
I'm going to just duplicate this so that we have our original. And I'm going to just play with these things here so you can see and hear uh, what they're doing. And the thing is that I want you to take away from this tutorial is not that you need to know everything about this plugin because we're not going to cover this is not a tutorial on trash this is a tutorial on how to be creative with the tool trash because i don't know everything about trash in like the perfect settings but i do know that if you just play around and fuck with it it can sound really sick so let's just spend one minute of time and fuck with this thing Oops. I'm going to jump into the high end. Okay, so I got it to a really good place and I think the thing that we all need to take away from uh, this tutorial is basically when you're using trash you want to not only change out the transistor as much as possible but you want to go in here to the filter tab and you want to make sure that you're messing with this filter tab because this is what's going to make it so that you can drive that transistor whether it's a distortion or saturation really hard get the sound that you're looking for and then you got to filter out all the extra digital bullshit at the end because it's going to be too much and that's why i think a lot of the plugins or sorry presets in trash suck you put it on you try to sift through presets because you want to get things moving right you want to just move on and everything starts sounding like ass so you start using the dry wet and you're like oh i guess that's cool yeah that's better fuck that just leave it on dry all the way dry wet i mean you can bring it down if you want to but if you actually spend some time and fuck with these things and actually shape your sound this will take you way further than saturator this will take you way further than ott or a bunch of other random plugins this is like the god tool you just have to like get in here and fuck around with things do not worry about what it is you're doing Try multiband, try single band, uh, mess with these settings here, change it from tension to linear to square, whatever is going to sound cool. And then when you're not sure if you want to change something because you like it and you want to make a tweak, just fucking duplicate that thing and then keep moving forward. And then you go back to the old trash that you started out with. Um, another thing before we check that out, let's go into the dynamics tool. I always recommend if they put it in here, they put it in here for a reason. And instead of adding like another glue compressor or another dynamics tool that you favor, use the one built into the program because they put it in there for a reason. I have the threshold hitting really hard here and I'm gassing up the gain and I'm using the mix of this, uh, 
this dynamics to kind of get the sound that I want. Let's bring up the threshold and see what it would sound like without it. All right, you get it, it would sound like ass. So that's why you wanna use the Dynamics tool. Now you can get in here and play with these settings all day long. They do make a difference. Everything makes a difference. So longer attacks are gonna be probably a bigger sound. Tighter attacks are gonna give us more of a, a transient push. So things like that are things you wanna think about when you're utilizing it. I don't wanna make this tutorial too long, but I think we got through the main things that you wanna be able to keep an eye out for playing around with this tool. Now, let's check out a couple things before we move on. We're gonna check it out before, and then with the, t the trash that I had on when I started the tutorial, and then the new trash that we just designed with. So this is before. The initial trash. Which sounds cool, but it's it doesn't have any style to it. I'm definitely favoring this new trash uh, that we just designed. Now let's put on both trash and see what that sounds like. I'm definitely liking that but now let's do one last test before we move on to the other quick example I'm gonna go ahead and put on both of the trash I'm gonna go ahead and put on this EQ and I'm gonna put on a little spaced out <laughs> So I think we can all agree that trash can take your sound a long way. So I, I think the, the other thing that I want to impart with you guys is that if you have a cool sound from right out the door, right out the gate, it's going to help you a lot more than if you're reliant on these things. Like this sound isn't amazing, but it kind of gets the point across of what, you know, maybe I was looking for in the song. And then we add the trash. You add a little bit of EQ, just so you can see that. I don't want to hide anything from you. And then a little bit of space. You're fucking ready to fuck every chick in the club. You know what I mean? Okay, so the way that I do my sound design is I make a cool sound, right? Like this one. I label it something really cool, all right? And I do some tweaks here. I fuck around with it there. And I get this really weird result. I do some trash. Here's my trash. I'm going to add trash to it now. And actually, in this example, I want to hear what this one sounds like on this sound. So let's pop that bad boy in there.
like that a lot. So we started off with the trash that I had originally used in the sound design for my original track. And now that I've played with this one, we put it on. It didn't sound perfect, but what did I do? I went in here and I played with what? Move, bitch. I played with the filtering right here. Was it this one? Yeah, I think it was this one. Yeah, we played with the filtering here. That's all we needed to do, and we got a really clean result. Added the original because, again, this one had its own thing going. It had its own style. We just brought down the dry wet into our into our um, into our new one, and then I got a, a better result than I originally had in the song. Now, the point that I wanted to make is like this sound right here is a little wonky and weird. You would probably hear this sound and be like, "I don't want to use this sound for my song." But what I do is I freeze and I flatten this down to audio, just like I've done these ones here. I'm going to play one of these. I'm, I don't even know what this one sounds like. I'm going to just stretch it out so you can hear what it sounds like. And then we're going to talk about it real quick. Okay, so what we have is one sound that was like, had a bunch of weird parts. I obviously found the parts that I like, cut them up and put them together to make a song. And this is how you do really cool shit and really unique sounding sound design. I think you probably get it at this point. Let me play you the drop section of this example real quick so you can see how this was integrated from just a wonky sound into a phrase that's, uh, I think, pretty cool. This is a little weird, one of my weirder tracks, but it's a fun one. Wow, that was fun. I know I sure learned a lot. I hope you guys did too. And if you guys want more content like this in the future, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so I know to continue making these. I'll see you guys in the next one.